Okay, so do you believe in ghosts? Because I've always said that I do. But then recently I realised that I've never heard someone's ghost encounter story or watched one of those crappy ghost hunter TV shows and been like, oh my gosh, that's it. That's for real, a ghost. So I think it's probably more accurate to say that I like to think I believe in ghosts, but I don't actually know what it would take to prove to me real life that ghosts are real. So I was definitely sceptical when I got a message on the Brisbane Is Weird Facebook page about a Brisbane boarding school that's apparently so haunted, any student that's boarded there and any supervisor that's worked there will tell you stories of their ghost encounters. Luckily, I knew someone that had boarded there, and as a teenager, she was one of those people that just didn't buy into unnecessary drama at all. So I knew if I sat down, got it on tape, she'd expose to me the mass hysteria that had been passed down from generation to generation, and there's no ghosts in the boarding house. 30 minutes into our catch-up as we sipped on flat whites outside the Woolworths at Cooparoo, I realised that I may have just found the first ghost encounter that I actually believe. My name's Scotty McDonald, and this is Brisbane is Weird, a podcast all about the weird stories that make up this amazing Australian city. Some from the past, some still happening today. And I guess this one, it's kind of both. It's okay. You're not going to see anything... Just as long as you don't wake up at 3am in the morning, just roll over and go back to bed. That's Ali. Before I worked in radio and made podcasts in my spare time, I was actually a youth worker and Ali used to come to our Friday night youth group when she could get time out of the boarding house, the Stuart Home boarding house. Stuart Home is an all girls school that's just west of the Brisbane CBD. Actually, If you've ever been up Mount Cutha before, you've probably seen it. It's the kind of gothic, straight-out-of-Harry-Potter-style-looking building that you can see halfway up the mountain. That's kind of what makes this story a little bit more creepy, is it does look like it's straight out of Hogwarts. If you've ever been on the campus up at Stuart Home, though, it's actually a really beautiful, nice school. Amazing views, as you would imagine. Ali's the first one to tell you she loved her time at Stuart Home, and she was actually a day student up until grade 11, when she boarded for her final two years there. Like I said before, my memories of Ali as a teenager, when she was at Stuart Home, was actually the really level-headed teenager, the one that just didn't buy into the drama that everybody else was going on about. So I actually really trust her encounters, her retelling of her stories. I fell asleep quite quickly, and then, sure enough, at 3am, I woke up, I checked my phone, three o'clock on the dot. I was like, shivers, what am I going to do? Um, and just literally maybe 10 seconds after I woke up, I started hearing this humming. And it was just kind of as if it was outside our dorm, just kind of roaming the hallways, just this humming. About half an hour later the door to the dorm opened and there was no light and if it's a night supervisor then they always have a torch and they're very abusive with their torch they always shine it in your face to check that you're there they gotta do a count Um, but there's no torch and so this door opened and it just creaked in just this most unnerving way and I couldn't hear any footsteps but I heard the floorboards creak closer and closer to my room. And then I just, I was facing the wall and I just felt someone staring at me um, for a good 10 minutes. And when the door had opened, the humming stopped. So I just went, just go to sleep, just pretend you're asleep. Don't care who it is, just pretend you're asleep. I spoke about it in the morning, I said, guys you told me not to wake up at 3 a.m and I woke up and this is what happened and I was crying as I was telling this story and I looked across to one of my other dorm mates and she was tearing up as well and I said what like why are you so invested in this Millie and she said I heard exactly the same thing I just thought I was imagining things 
but now that I know that you heard it too, and now I just don't know what to think because I was just trying my best to just ignore everything. And I can't do that now that I know that you heard it too. And I was like, all right, so I wasn't imagining it either. It's real, it happened, and it is terrifying. Okay, if you're anything like me, at this point you're probably thinking, this is mass hysteria. A group of teenage girls all living together in one place in what is an old, creaky building at the best of times, and then you've got urban legends passed down that just makes the whole thing so much more dramatic. You wake up in the middle of the night, you hear a bit of a creak somewhere else in the building, Maybe you've got stress from assignments, exams, classes, friendships, and everything just kind of becomes really dramatic and fits the narrative of the stories that all the older girls have told you and passed down to you. So I kind of dug around this as well to try and uncover where Ali had heard about the ghosts before she stepped into the boarding house and if it really was one of those pass it down amongst your friends kind of situations. And the truth is, it was. So I had a big sister at the school and she never boarded, but she had heard lots of stories from the boarders about uh, the boarding house and the school is haunted. Um, And that's, you know, very typical of the school up on the hill. No one really knows what it's about, but it's just up there and it looks creepy. So I was like, oh yeah, look, I don't really believe in ghosts. I have never really wanted to believe in ghosts um and so I just kind of thought yeah maybe like I'd heard a few stories but I thought maybe it was some kids taking the piss out of everything but when it's 150 girls all in on the same thing and not just the girls but the supervisors you start to get a real taste of oh okay this is real (laughs) And so, yeah, I just didn't, I didn't want to believe in ghosts, but, you know, the stories all turned out to be true, and I learnt a lot in boarding. (laughs) Okay, so if you're still sceptical about this, humour me. Let's just pretend that the experiences that these girls are having are actually genuine ghost encounters. And if that's the case, is there anything else going on other than the fact that the building's old, it's kind of a little bit isolated, it looks a bit creepy, that could be leading to ghosts living in the boarding house? A story that came up a lot was the seance. When I first heard this mentioned by two ex-students, including Ali, and a couple of ex-staff, I thought this is going to be another one of the urban legends that every generation said happened to a generation like five years behind them, and you can trace the story back to the 1950s and they're still saying it happened five years behind them. The problem is, when I dug a little bit, it turns out every person I talked to about this story was there when it happened. The first term of year 11... And there was some new girls to the school, and they were new to boarding. And they'd heard of, you know, there were some ghosts and whatnot in the boarding house. So they decided to make their own Ouija board. And then they got freaked out halfway through. And instead of, like, closing it or whatever you do with the Ouija board, they decided to burn it. They're like, okay, enough of this. This is terrifying because they got freaked out. I don't know what happened to them. But they just decided, hey, let's stop this. This is terrifying. Um, And they burnt it and they didn't close it properly. And so it was known from then on that that dorm was kind of haunted because no one really knew what they'd done. The dorm itself, it just started to... It it just felt like a normal dorm before that. I remember because my friend had been in that dorm. And I'd been in that dorm a few times and it was just was like any other room and then you could kind of tell something felt off you'd walk in and just it was cold and you'd get shivers and it just like there's something unnerving about just getting goosebumps every time you walk into a room it's the same room every time but yeah it just 
something felt odd and off about that room ever since that Ouija board. The Ouija board, the seance, it happened. I spoke to someone who was in the room when it happened, and it's one of those stories that hasn't really got lost in translation. Almost every version of the story that I heard from people who had heard it from friends matched what happened that night. The other place to look if you want to find where ghosts might have come from is Stuart Holmes' history. Yeah, every school has a haunted building that apparently a groundskeeper died in or whatever. Stuart Home, though, it had a pretty intense past. So it opened in 1920, and um, it then, over the years, became um, bigger and bigger until World War Two, when the it couldn't be used for a school as um, World War Two was happening, obviously, and so it was used as a hospital. Um, so there's lots of these ghost stories because. Um, all the soldiers and stuff who were in World War Two uh, died in hospital or the nuns that had to live through it and see what was happening and be exposed to the terror of such a huge world war. Um, there's some not nice stories about them hanging themselves. Um, and so basically just lots of people died in that building, you can assume. Most schools have rumours of secret tunnels running to their sister school down the road. Stewart Home has talk of being used as a war hospital. By the Americans, nonetheless, during World War II. And here's the thing, it's actually true. If you do a Google search on this, you'll find uh, a link to a page that Stewart Home had up about the school's history. When I try and click it now, it looks like the page has been deleted. But I can also find an American War Archive website, which talks about the Stuart Home site, has photos of it and everything, even like a site number. Stuart Home was a hospital for American soldiers during World War II. They literally shipped the girls off all over southeast Queensland to continue their studies while it was used as a hospital. We don't know where the nuns went during this time, if any stayed there. We also don't really know any stories of the people that worked or were treated there or lived there or anything like that. So here's what we can say. It was a hospital used during World War II. Could it be haunted because of that? Well, yeah. So what is it that me... A self-confessed, I wish I believed in ghosts, but I have to admit I probably don't guy, take from Ali's story that made me go, actually, maybe I do believe in ghosts. Well, I came up with my own theory of what was actually going on, and it wasn't a theory that anyone had said to me before. It just came out from a few different stories that people told. For example, this one. e when I was there, was just a recreational space. So it's just the top of the boarding house, the top floor. Um, there was a couch. There was a TV at one point. And there was also two rooms because occasionally um, supervisors would sleep over or um, they'd just be in-house supervisors. So they'd live actually in boarding. And that's where they'd live. There was also like a bathroom and a little kitchenette. Um, But otherwise it was out of bounds unless you had permission and had a key. And I really do think that's because of some of these stories that came to light. Males um, come to work on that house, uh, on that floor. So during my time in boarding, in their last semester, they were preparing for year seven to come into boarding. And so they were doing all these refurbishments on the area and so we had an apprentice carpenter up there one day um, after hours just doing some last minute things while all the girls was in on the normal floors having their afternoon tea and so he was left up there by his co-workers and he came flying down the stairs and refused to return to boarding refused to return to Stuart home he just waited outside in the reception area and he was like tell my friends that I can't come back here and that rings to a story um, that my supervisor actually told me of one of the in-house supervisors was living there and she had some friends over both male and female 
and the girls went down to go get um, some food from the um, the nest, which is the common room. Um, and so she went down with her friend to go get some food, and the guy came running down the stairs, and he, he wouldn't let anyone, he wouldn't go back up unless the girls came with him. And he said that he just heard this, he saw this figure in the doorway, and he just heard a voice saying, get out no men are allowed here and he just freaked out and he ran away and it's just to make a grown grown man leave and I suppose that ring like that's all about it's a girls boarding school um, and whatever lives there just doesn't like men being there it's not a place for men that last bit I reckon it's really important and it goes hand in hand with this story, which came up a lot, particularly in connection to the whole it used to be a war hospital thing. And one of the most famous ghost stories about Stuart Holm is the soldier. And so um, he's seen roaming the hallways at night and before the girls arrive on their travel days, just and he's just roaming the halls, checking to make sure that everything's okay, everything's in order. And he's dressed in his uniform and he's seen as a protective presence, I suppose, to make sure that these girls are okay. The story about the carpenter on E floor, well, that finished with Ali saying that it's almost going hand in hand with the whole idea of it being a girl's boarding school. No males are allowed. Then this soldier, he's a protective presence. It actually led me to asking the question, are these ghosts dangerous, harmful? Like, do they do stuff that could be negative? And whether I was talking to a dorm supervisor or a student, this is really the answer I got to that question. There's ghosts that play tricks on people and, like, tap people's feet, tap your foot as you walk into the same room so you think that you're tripping over something and then nothing's there, or tap your shoulder and think that someone's there. The final story I got told was about a graveyard that's on site there at Stewart Home. It's kind of hidden away a bit. 20 graves, all belonging to nuns who worked there at the school. The students apparently use it as a bit of a terrifying initiation ceremony for some of the new boarders. The thing is, though, those 20 nuns that are buried there, their whole life, their purpose, their call as a nun was to teach, raise discipline, or almost be a second mum to these girls. You'll remember that for a period, Stuart Home was actually a boarding school. There were no students who went home at night. There were just girls who learnt and lived there. So for these nuns, these girls were, in a way, their daughters. And as they continue to see this world get more and more corrupted and, and things change around them, you, you can imagine their hearts are still so deeply invested in seeing the best for these girls. And if there is a ghost or ghosts living in that boarding house, I suspect they're from that graveyard. I suspect they're nuns that spent their whole life loving and serving and protecting these girls in whatever way they did. And they're just not ready to give that up. Even remember Ali's story of the ghost watching over her. The stories of ghosts scaring away male workers from the boarding house. The protective soldier that was marching around to make sure everything was in order before the girls got back. And the playful, fun ghost just saying, hey, I'm here. I have a feeling that these ghosts, they're not doing any harm. They're just extra eyes on these young women learning to take on the world. At the end of our chat, I asked Ali, overall, the idea of ghosts or spirits in the boarding house as a boarder was that a positive or a negative experience? I think boarding school on its own is quite, you know, you're in it together. But when it's people experiencing the exact same thing as you did, 
there's kind of like a community in it, especially, you know, you're all living together and you're like, yeah, you're in it together. It's just the borders against the rest of the world, I suppose. It's just we all have the same experience. We know what that boarding house holds probably gonna get in trouble for doing this interview because they'll be like oh, you let out the secrets of boarding um but yeah no it's it's a community definitely brisbane is weird is produced by me scotty mcdonald today's episode thanks to ali and all my anonymous sources who helped out you know who you are Hey, if you loved this story or any of the Brisbane is Weird stories, it would be an amazing help for us to continue producing them uh, by just jumping onto the iTunes podcast store and giving us a nice five-star rating. I know it's a bit presumptuous that I want five-star, but hey, if you don't ask... Uh, as well as that, if there's anything in particular you loved about the stories uh, or any stories you'd like us to pursue, feel free to drop it in the comments there on iTunes as well or on our Facebook or Instagram pages at Brisbane is Weird or on our website, brisbaneisweird.com. You can shoot us a message through there.